Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. In this video we are going to talk about the chain of responsibility design pattern. So let's get started. Now chain of responsibility design pattern is a part of gangs of four design pattern and here we are going to understand when to use the chain of responsibility design pattern and how we can implement it. It is really easy to implement. So let's go ahead and understand the problem here. So suppose you are working on the ordering system and what you have to do is you have to get the request here. Okay, request for the order and you have to process the request. That's your goal. Okay, that's a simple thing. And what comes in between is suppose you have to add some of the validation. So you have to make sure that whatever the request comes for the ordering system, those are properly authenticated. So you add the authentication part as well between the order processing and the request that comes in. Okay. So after sometimes you also add that, okay, whatever the process is coming that also has to be properly authorized. So a proper request has a proper authentication, proper authorization or not is the request by a customer or is request by admin or not that you have to identify and accordingly you have to do some processing on it. Okay. So you add the authorization as well. After that, after sometimes you get a new requirement to add some of the validations as well. So you go ahead and add some validations and after that your system is really working well and you are getting a lot of orders to get processed. So what you try to do is you add a caching system as well. So suppose you are adding a caching to this particular system and you are adding bunch of more different things just before processing your order. Okay. So you can see that this is a lot of details that you are adding here just before doing the processing just to process your order you are adding a lot of different things right and sometimes that also happens that some of the validations or some of the processes you don't need as well. So suppose Sometimes you don't need validation. Suppose sometimes you don't need caching as well, but still you do those cachings and validations and all those stuffs and bunch of other details or other processes that you have added in between the actual processing of the order. Okay. So you can see that this type of scenarios occurs very frequently as well. Okay. So to avoid this problem and to avoid unnecessary calls, right? What we can do is we can add the chain of responsibility design pattern. What chain of responsibility design pattern will do is it will have a appropriate task for doing appropriate things. It will have authentication will have just to do authentication and after authentication you can tell okay once the authentication is done you can move to authorization. So you can see that you are passing the request and a data from one responsibility to the another responsibility. Once the authentication is done and if the user is customer then you have to do some other stuffs. If the user is admin, then you have to do some other stuffs. So you can see that there is a bifurcation there, but there are other stuffs you need to do, right? So based on that, based on some conditions or based on some logic, what you can do is you can again process those different conditions, different responsibilities, right? If it's a customer, there is a different responsibilities needs to be done. If it's an admin, there is a different responsibilities that you need to done. So with that, what you can do is you can define different responsibilities and those different responsibilities will be passed along the request and those operations will be performed. Okay. Suppose your yeah, caching is not required in admin, then you will skip the caching for the admin. Okay. You will not pass that responsibility, the next responsibility that needs to be completed for the admin role. If it's a customer, yeah, caching is needed. So you, you will pass that caching as the next responsibility for the request. So you can see you are adding the responsibility, a chain of responsibility to be completed alongside the request. Okay. So because of this chain, this pattern is called as chain of responsibility. Okay. So rather than doing this, what you will do is you will create a request and this is your process, right? And what you will do in between is you will add responsibility one, responsibility two, responsibility three, responsibility four. Okay. All these responsibilities you will add and alongside this request, you will pass all this data to all these responsibilities and whichever responsibility you're passing next, those responsibilities will be executed and your entire process will be completed. If some of the responsibilities not needed, you will can skip those responsibilities as well. Okay. So that's the general idea about the chain of responsibilities and pattern and where you can implement it. Now to implement this, you will need an abstract class, which will have that particular responsibility and which will also take the next responsibility to be executed. Okay. So let's take the example. Let's go to the code and see the example that we have taken up. What we have done is we have taken the example of a payment processing here. So I'll just give you the gist here that we have the payment processing and we want to process some payments. Okay. That's a simple thing. And we have added the chain of responsibility. What we have done is that we have different types of payment processing. That is the bank processing. Okay. You can process via bank. You can process via credit card. You can process via PayPal as well. 
this type of different processing you can do okay and what we have added is that if the amount is less than 500 bank can processes process it okay if the amount is less than 1000 credit card can process those payment and if the amount is less than 1500 people can process it okay and what we have done is we have passed the responsibility okay for a payment processor for a bank there is a responsibility that if it's not able to process this amount it will add the next responsibility to the credit card okay and if credit card is not able to process those payment it has the next responsibility given to the people okay that way the responsibilities are shared along and the payment will be done for us okay so that's a simple agenda here let's go to the code and here you can see that i have given the basic information here as well and i have also given from where i have taken this reference so if you want you can go through this reference and you can learn more about it okay and you can share some love as well to the creator so now you can see we have created a simple abstract class here that is the payment handler okay this is something will be able to handle our payment and within this payment handler you can see that i have created one more property that is the next payment handler okay so you can see that i am having the property of the next handler that is the next responsibility that it is going to do okay simple thing that is my handler and what's going to be my next handler what is going to be my next responsibility to complete okay so that two thing i have added here and this is the method to add the next responsibility simple thing and now you can see this is a method abstract method which is going to handle the payment which will take the amount and which will handle the payment this is something will be implemented by the concrete classes now let's go to the concrete classes that is the bank payment handler okay so this is a bank payment handler which is extending payment handler okay and this has the handle payment method which is taking the amount and here you can see it's simple thing if the amount is less than 500 okay process it else go to next dot handle payment simple okay if i'm able to handle it that's good i'm not able to handle it call the next responsibility okay simple same way if i go to credit card that's the same thing that i'm able to handle thousand rupees okay thousand dollars whatever the currency is if not then go to the next handler same way for the people as well that if i'm able to handle this that's fine otherwise go to the next handler so you can see that my all the handlers are ready i have my base handler that is abstract class and all the classes implementing this handle payment method okay now this is my main method that is the chain of responsibility application this is my main method and what i'm doing is i have created three payment handlers that is bank payment handler credit card payment handler and paypal bank payment handler and here you can see that i have added the responsibility that bank has the responsibility of credit card it will give the responsibility to credit card credit card will give the responsibility to people and now you can see that with the bank i am calling all these different methods okay because your bank is your base handler right that's the starting point so from there it will be able to traverse request throughout the all the responsibilities that you have given in the chain so that's the idea about the chain of responsibility now we will go through this all the different methods and we will try to identify that which particular method will be called where okay so this is 600 dollars and 600 dollars we will call bank pay handle payment method and bank can only handle 500 so it will be calling the next possible handler available okay so the next possible handler we have added is credit card credit card can handle 1000 so it will be processed by credit card okay bank handler was skipped same way you can see this is 200 200 can be processed by bank itself so it will call that bank handler and the rest will be skipped same way for 1200 1200 can only be processed by paypal so bank will be skipped credit card will be skipped and paypal will be executing this same way for 600 so let's run this and test our all the things so you can see that first 600 was same handled by credit card 200 was handled by bank 1200 was handled by paypal and 600 was handled by credit card so you can see that how easy it is to implement this chain of responsibility design pattern so you need to understand where you can fit in this and how easy it is to implement so you can just have to have one basic handler and the property of next possible handler you want to call there are different various modifications also available but this is the base of it okay once you understand the base of any design pattern you will be able to modify it alongside what actual your need is okay so this is all about the chain of responsibilities and pattern and it's part of the behavioral design pattern so this was the first design pattern we covered in the behavioral design pattern if you like this video then give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos you can also click on join button to join my channel and support me i will see you in the next video till then happy coding bye bye